All right, Manny Puig, how are you doing, sir? Uh, good. Uh, talking's easy, so talking. We'll ta- yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll talk all you want. So you came all the way here from uh, Fort Lauderdale, from your home in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, yes. Thank you for coming out. We got some amazing tridents from you, which we'll show later. I enjoy making them. <laughs> There's, they're probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Very primitive uh, weapon. Definitely a very primitive weapon. Yeah, I'm, I'm a very primitive guy. I yeah, mean, I don't know. yeah, we can <laughs> tell. Notice, I'm like uh, old fashioned in many ways. That's amazing. So for, uh, for the people out there who may not comprehend completely, uh, tell me who is Manny Puig? Uh, there's no title to what I do. I interact with sharks, alligators, uh, venomous snakes. Uh, also, I make you know medieval weapons. I'm an artist. Uh, I do the kind of stuff I like doing. And I, I free dive, a lot of breath hold diving. I've done scuba diving also. I mean, I've been bent nine times. You know, I blacked out once, so, but I spent a lot of time in the water. I'm more aquatic than land-based, let's put it this way. And when you say you've been bent, you mean you got the bends? That's when you get, is that what you're talking about, when you get blood ox, or, uh, bubbles in your bloodstream? Nitrogen in your, yeah, in your right. blood. You know, we were commercial spearfishing back in the old days, and you do too many dives, that's what happens. So you go too deep, you don't decompress enough, you're in a hurry, you get bent. So and what, what happens? People you die from out that. or you get tremendous pain. Uh, one time I got paralyzed. Where, like in your chest, you get the pain? or it's Shoulders, joints, wherever it hits you, it can kill you. It, wherever the bubble gets stuck, you okay. or, or you can give you paralysis. I got a paralyzed arm. I had to go. I started getting my feel back, but I went down on, back under water to repress uh, the air bubbles. Yeah. The gas bubbles to get them through your system. i never been to a chamber, but I, I, don't, I really don't like to deep dive too much because of that reason. I don't want to get bent anymore. What kind of depths do you have to go to to get to get bent like that? You can get bent as long as you're deeper than 33 feet. If you're less than 30 feet, you can't get bent, even if you're down there 24 hours. Really? Now, if you're in 40 feet of water and you stay down there 10 hours, let's say you you will come up, you'll be bent. You know, at 50 feet, you got like uh, 10 minutes. At 60 feet, you got well, no, I mean 40 minutes. Okay. That's how long so, you have to come no, up. One for, hour, no, one hour. I think it's uh, it's been a long time. One hour is sixty feet, forty minutes at eighty feet, and twenty minutes at hundred feet. So if you stay beyond that, you can get bent. I mean, you can push the tables and get away with it. We did it a lot, but there's a possibility you don't know when you push a limit and how fast are you breathing? How many? We have computers now mm-hmm. to try to help you with monitor that. all that. Right, but you can't. That can't happen free diving, right? Yes, it can. It can happen for diving. If you deep dive, if you free dive very deep and you continuously do it all day long, like if you're spearfishing at 120, 150 feet, you start adding up your bottom time. So at the end of the day, if you've done enough drops, you'll come home, you'll be bent. I, so it happens. That's crazy. I didn't know you could do that free diving. What's deep for you for free diving? I've done maybe 180, 200 before. I, c- I couldn't oh, mark past 165, <laughs> but I blew an eardrum doing it. And uh, normally, deep for me would be, you know, like 140 to shoot a fish, 130, 140, around there. I'm just talking going down there. Um, at 110 feet, I stayed 40 seconds on the bottom. I timed myself. I laid on the sand, oh, and I'd see how comfortable I was. So if I laid down there for 40 seconds, and I swam, swam back up at 110 so I've done stuff like that. Uh, sometimes, you know, you're struggling with a fish or you don't know how long you go beyond there. You're hand-catching fish. That'll take you down there a long time sometimes. Right, because sometimes if you're chasing a fish that you shot, you kind of like you forget about, okay, I have 100 feet of water above me. I have to keep that, be mindful of that while I'm chasing this fish. There's a lot of factors uh, yeah. come involved. I've held my breath five minutes and 35 seconds before. Is that, a, is, that, is that a record? No, the people can do more. Okay. That's good. That's but, really good. Yeah, it's really good, but the people, they actually, you know, do more. Uh, I don't know. I swam 400 feet underwater, too. That's another thing while holding my breath. I've done that. And that's, like, my tops. I have a hard time equalizing when I'm real deep. So I'm, okay. I'm better at that than I am at deep diving, let's say. I, okay. I'm limited by, by my ears. We should have had a swimming pool here and done the contest where you go back and forth. Do you ever make bets with people where you say, I bet you I can go back and forth six times? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, you do like 60. 
Uh, when I blacked out, I was in a swimming pool training. Really? Yeah, oh, back shit. and forth doing the same thing, you know, hyperventilate, do a few laps, hyperventilate a few laps until like when I, when I passed out, I didn't even know I had passed out. That's, oh, a, that's a killer. You have no idea. Right. So, oh, you're interfering with my training. That was my, my things, you know. I would say something like that. And no, they, <laughs> they weren't interfering. They were saving me. <laughs> right. You completely passed out and somebody came completely, in there and saved yeah, your life. Yeah, well, they were the, the people I was so swimming with. Wow. God. So uh, the first time I ever heard about you and the first time I learned about you, um, oh. I'm sure like most people, was during the uh, days when you were on Jackass and on Wild Boys. How did you get involved with those guys? And, and can, you t can you explain to me, walk me <clears> through <throat> how, you, how that whole thing happened? How did you start working with Steve-O and all those I, guys? From their point of view, I heard they saw some videos of me in Animal Planet levitating an alligator in a swamp wearing a Speedo. So I think it's the Speedo is what really sold it. was the Speedo, yeah, not the alligator. The Speedo, and never mind the alligator, the <laughs> Speedo. Yeah, yeah, yeah that were, definitely sold Steve-O. They, they thought that was really awesome, so. They said, who's this sexy guy in the Speedo <laughs> holding the alligator? We need him now. <laughs> yeah, so then they told me, these jackass guys are looking for you. They want to do something with you. And they go, and people tell them, they're really, really dumb guys. <laughs> that's, what I, that's the first thing I heard. Yeah, yeah, these guys are really bad. They're really dumb, dumb. I'm telling you, they're dumb. And eventually I ran into them, and we, uh, yeah, first day out, uh, Steve-O gets uh, ran over by an airboat, and he puts a worm up his nose. Uh, Johnny Knoxville wants to get bit by rattlesnake on purpose. And, <laughs> and until years later, I showed him my hand. Hey, hey, this is why I didn't want you to get bit by a rattlesnake. You understand? I told him that. That's you know. from a rattlesnake? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah I, I noticed on your Instagram, you, a lot of your photos, you put your hand out to show your finger. It's a signature, Mark. To it's, make it sure it's, it's, not, it's not an imposter. It's the right guy. You know, Everybody knows that I lost a finger to a rattlesnake. Okay, this is, it's me. It's him. Uh, it's kind of like a joke There's like no that. fake Manny. Yeah. There's no yeah. fake Manny Puig. You can't impersonate. Yeah. Steve, -O, Steve -O took a picture of it first thing when he saw it and sent it to Jeff Tremaine. He was laughing. Look at this. <laughs> took a picture. But um, I got bit by a rattlesnake in high school. when I was 17 years old. Really? Pygmy rattler. And what were you doing? Picking it up the same way that I got bit by the Western Diamondback. The same style, a repeat of the whole thing with a, a bigger rattlesnake. And that one, I said, I, when I looked at myself, I, I'm thinking, I really messed up this time. Where was this at? Texas. In Texas. Texas. So at 15, yeah. you're already, like, catching animals and, and doing all that stuff. Yeah, at I, high school level, was hand-catching large alligators by hand. I was picking up venomous snakes. I was doing it, all that kind of stuff. Spearfishing. What made you want to do this at such a yeah, young why? age? What got you into it? Was there something that inspired you to do this? Or I think I saw too many, like, Tarzan movies, <laughs> Sea Hunt. Yeah. Uh, you know, Lloyd Bridges, all the jungle gym, underwater, mm -hmm. fighting with alligators, all these different, I saw these different uh, aquatic and, uh, you know, wildlife guys and all that stuff. And that really, you know, got me inspired. Wow. So what happened when you got bit when you were young? What did you have to do after you got bit? Did you just have to go to the hospital or what? I ended up in the hospital. My friends started telling me, you better, I think, oh, well, what are we supposed to do? You know, and, you know, you're watching too many movies and I go, well, we're supposed to get drunk or something like that. And they're like, <laughs> and then the guy, the friends are all looking at me kind of funny like that. Go, I think we better take you to the hospital. Let's just take you home. You know, and uh, when I got to the hospital, I was worried about how much it was going to cost. Yeah. And they told me, you want to keep that hand? You better lay down there and let us get to work on you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they told me. What do they have to do to you to, to get rid of the venom or before back they amputate? Then, they anti-venom. That's what they did. Anti-venom, uh, right, right. Anti-venom. And then they were, back then they would uh, try to suck the poison out of you with a suction cup. Okay. This is, now, later on, they don't do that anymore. No. They just take you to a hospital and they put you on anti-venom. They hold your arm up high, you know, to keep the swelling down. Yeah. Now, the, the amount of venom, I grabbed that rattlesnake by the neck and uh, he made a half a turn on me, got both fangs into one finger. And, you know, I held him and I picked him up and I told the producer, it got me. And he goes, no, no, it didn't. I go, yeah, it did. So he was like, oh, no, everybody's like froze. And I think Buck Medley goes, uh, let's go to the hospital. That was the guy I was with yeah. before Manny dies. Let's, let's go like right now. So we got in a car. We're going about 110 miles an hour all the way to the hospital. We're about like, This was for the recent bite. Yeah, for the last one. I was that was a diamondback, you said? Western diamondback, about six feet long. It yeah. was a, a monster. Where were you? Texas. In Texas. Texas, too. Yeah, it's like, I don't really want to pick up any more venomous snakes after that second one. That yeah. was just, uh, I'm still recuperating 10 so years later. What was going through your mind when that happened? Like, what were you thinking? What did you, what, what were you trying to do? Like, were you, were you, did you like tie a... Uh, no, 
I didn't do, they didn't tie anything to it. No uh, tourniquet or anything? I was really like bummed out. Yeah. It's almost like you got on a flat tire in the middle of nowhere. It's just a really, yeah. you know, depressing feeling. Yeah. You do you feel like, like woozy from it? And no, I don't feel woozy or anything. No. I just felt tremendous pain in, in no time. It just got. I knew it was. I knew what I was into. I knew I was. It was going to be horrific. Yeah. And then it was so bad. I could feel the the venom. I was praying the whole way, praying to God the whole way to the yeah. hospital. I'm a Christian, so I was praying. You know, God keep me around for right. a little time, bit longer. For more time. Yeah. yeah. This is. I says. It, I felt like I wasn't going to make it. Really, really. In that that's sense, it. yeah. I went away to the hospital. When I got in there, they were taking their time in the hospital, warming up the core fat. That's what they injected. With. And I said, "Well, we're gonna." I said, "You getting warmed up yet?" How long right. had it been by the time you got to the hospital? About forty-five minutes. Oh. And I'm like, uh, "I need about fifty-five gallon drum of that stuff you got there." Yeah. It said this snake was enormous. I have a ton of venom in me, and if you guys don't put a lot of that stuff in me, this thing is gonna really mess me up. I told them that. And God, they're all dude. taking their time. And, you yeah, know. you're thinking, hurry the hell well, up. Well, they, they got to go like this and warm it up with their hands, the core fat, because it's kept uh, and like frozen. Right. To preserve it. Mm-hmm. So it was like, man, they should have had it ready before I got here because right. we called it in. It happens in Texas so often that they don't care. There were three people in the hospital that day counting me that were bit by rattlesnake. Really? No way. Yeah, that's like, it's, it's no big deal over there. That's but crazy. The other guy had a finger that was all black, like mine was getting. And he goes, he, he had told uh, my friend, oh, yeah, I'm probably going to lose that finger. <laughs> and sure enough, they told me, well, it looks like your finger might make it. I went to back home to Miami a few weeks later. I couldn't, they let me out after four days. I couldn't even get inside uh, an airplane to go home. I stayed in Buck Medley's house, laying in a bed there for two weeks. Damn. I could hardly do anything. I couldn't even pick up a cup of coffee with that hand. And the pain was tremendous. And then when I got home, uh, I'd, my in-law took me to the hospital, and the doctor said, you've got to stay here. That finger's got to come off. Oh, man. Okay, let's get it off right now then. <laughs> yeah. Just the finger was in, like, tremendous pain. It wasn't your whole body. No, uh, well, the, the hand. Just the hand. Oh, the okay. arm. It, the swelling went all the way up my arm, all the way to, like, my uh, the side of my body. I had swollen everywhere. Uh, you know, it was like a balloon. I mean, tremendously, like, being puffed up. Right. Really. W- but when you were on the way to the hospital, when they were driving 100 miles an hour trying to get you there, like, were you just sitting? Were you holding your arm up? Did you were you doing I, any, anything specific to try to hopefully like stop the venom from spreading into your they, body? They had some frozen chicken. They had picked up a store <laughs> and I put my hand on the frozen chicken. And yeah. I found out later they're not even supposed to do that. Oh, so that wasn't that was the wrong thing to do. Also, you're not okay. supposed to get it. You're cold. not supposed to do anything but go go to the hospital. Yeah, okay. that's what they say. Get just go there as fast as go you can. Go there as fast as you, there can. As fast as you <laughs> can, and you know try to relax. I, I was relaxed. I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't freaking out. I wasn't agitated. I was more like bummed out. Yeah. Right. Okay. You know, I've been through some stuff. I mean, I, uh, on the outdoor channel, I had that rattlesnake bite. I also got bit by an alligator uh, in the back. The only time I've ever been bit by an alligator in my entire life of messing with alligators, he snuck up behind me and bit me when I wasn't looking. <laughs> so uh, he grabbed the wetsuit and peeled off my back. So he was not able to get a good grip on me. So that's, Damn. again, the good Lord saved me from that one. It was a 10 footer snuck up me from behind in a canal. I was swimming down. I thought my friend, um, the Indian guy, had hit me with the airboat. <laughs> For a minute. Wait a minute, I heard, heard an airboat. Did he, did he just run me over? What's going on here? And the boat, boat was like 50 yards behind. What? And, and when the alligator, and I could hear the airboat coming, so the alligator didn't care. He must have come out of cover and got me from behind. I was too lazy to look behind me. And then I faced him off. I chased him and harassed him so he wouldn't attack me again. And then I didn't know what was wrong with me. I got in the airboat. I said, well, I'm able to get in the airboat. I peeled the wetsuit back and I told, let me know. I told everybody, what's wrong with my back? Let me know. Yeah. And it goes, it wasn't bad at all. 12 scratches. That's it. That's it. I was going to, I got to go to shore and put a bottle of bleach on it. Like right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Bleach? Yeah, it kills all the bacteria. Holy shit, oh that's God. pretty rough. Not like uh, alcohol, rattle, just straight bleach? Straight bleach. A rattlesnake, I mean, um, an alligator yeah. can kill you just like a rattlesnake with a bacteria in its mouth. Okay. Oh, really? Even if you survive his bite, he can rot you. He eats dead animals sometimes, not just living things. Right. So, uh, you know, anything can happen. Alligator is a very dangerous animal. No question about it. So if you get bit by an alligator, don't bleach on it, not bleach alcohol. Hmm. The doctor will tell you no. 
Right. The guys in the woods, the alligator hunters, and yeah. the crazy people tell you to put bleach on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I trust them. So let's just clear that right <laughs> yeah. away. That's not medical field. Right. This is, uh, yeah. you it's know. not FDA approved. No, no, not <laughs> FDA. This is yeah. woodsmen uh, technology there. Yeah. I would definitely trust them before the doctors, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I would too. I also got gored by a boar. Gored by a boar. Yeah. Well, it was something boar with a spear. He cut a tendon in my arm and he got my leg uh, shooting blood out of my arm like a <laughs> like a squirt you? gun. Well, he bit me. Yeah, I ended up bare hand to hand with a with a boar. And you were hunting him here in Florida. Yes, with a spear. With a spear, it's great idea and a bad idea at the same time. Right, it, 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 boars are very dangerous. Right, they they make me uh, nervous. That's Do they really? Right. Yeah. Out of all the crocodiles and the sharks, yeah, the boars. The if boars. You're, if you're hunting a boar, on, you know, on foot on the ground with a spear. You're in problem. If you got bay dogs, you're in danger. If you got a catch dog, you're pretty safe. How big do those get? A boar in Florida, I've known of them to be like 500 pounds. But yeah. Normally it's like 150 pounds. If you get one like 220, you got a really nice one. Uh, I know a guy's been doing his entire life. He got one 400 pounder. You ever? Do you eat those or no? Yes. You do. Yeah, they're good. Hmm. Really. Interesting. Yeah, you know, you got to take care of it properly yeah. and cook it right and everything. But it, yeah, it's good meat, really good. Wow, interesting. Yeah, the the conquistadors brought him here, uh, Hernando de Soto. Okay. Um, Five hundred years ago, and wow. they let him loose in Florida. Really? Yeah. So they've been here ever since. But like your Florida panther, the Florida mountain lion depends on them. That's his main source of food, not the white-tailed deer in Florida. Right. Yeah. That's what's increasing their population, by the way. And also, the bears eat them sometimes, too. Really? And alligators also eat them. Wow. Uh, they, in turn, they'll eat, you know, whatever. They'll eat a baby deer. They'll eat gator eggs. You know, okay. Everything eats everything. There's wow. tons of them here, though, right? Certain areas is more than others. They yeah. like they favor a certain type of terrain. And other areas are heavily hunted because they're not they're not protected like white-tailed deer and everything else. Is, so right. a lot of people are relentlessly hunting them. Some people don't want them on their property. Some people right. want them on their property. Mm. If you like boar hunting and you take people boar hunting, you want them on your property. Right. right you and if there. you're a farmer and they're eating up your crops, you don't want them around. Right. Or, or, or some ranchers complain they tear up the the grass. Okay. Mm. They uproot it. Okay. Which is what the cows, you know, they need the sod, you know, the grass. Right. At what age were you when you started getting serious in the ocean with like breath holding and doing serious free diving and spear fishing? I learned how to swim at six and I was really interested. So I would put on a mask and look around and, you know, shallow water. Mm -hmm. uh, and as soon as I could, I think it was like 14 when I had my first spear gun. Mm -hmm. And I started from there. I had a tiny little spear gun with shooting grunts. Okay. And then, you know, barracudas, more eels, anything that swam, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Mm. Wow. I got, I went from spear guns to commercial spear fishing to pole spears and to hand fishing. The hand fishing is the most primitive uh, type of fishing. Now I like to fish with my tridents. Yeah. But I do enjoy the challenge of catching a fish by hand. By hand. Yeah, fresh so, water, salt water, wherever I've been. So what happened? It just, you kind of just got so good at using all of those other, you went started from with a spear gun and worked your way down to a trident or just with your bare hands. You just wanted more of a challenge. You just got so good it, at it. Yeah, it's more fun. Not that I, I'm not the best spear fisherman in the world. I'm good. I, good enough to make my living at it. But uh, yeah. some of these other world champion people, all that, yeah, they're better than me at spear fishing. At hand fishing, I don't know who beats me at hand fishing in that sense. I mean, I've hand caught uh, many different types of sharks. I've hand caught uh, about probably 40 or 50 different types of fish mm -hmm. before by hand. I've done a lot, a lot of hand fishing. It's wow. outsmarting to fish and figure out how you can get your hands on them. Uh, it's a challenging. It's fun. I like, I like doing that. So what, like what, walk me through what it takes to go, I mean, what kind of fish do you go hand fishing for? Like what is like? I mean, I've hand caught groupers, snappers, uh, mako sharks. Uh, silky sharks, nurse sharks, lemon sharks, uh, all kinds of tilapia, gar in freshwater tilapia, garfish, catfish. I did. Uh, I caught catfish by hand, even in Florida. I did in Louisiana. I got a seventy-two pound uh, flathead catfish. Wow! What's the technique? You just, I mean, fish are fast. So what, every, you just got to be super them. stealth. Or? Every every. Fish has a different technique. Okay. Like if you're after a red grouper, he'll go in a hole. Right. So you reach in a hole and you grab him. Oh, okay. 
That's you it. Know, well, it's you got to know how to work them out of the hole and how <laughs> right. to get a grip on them and everything else and don't get bit by Maury in the process. I have a hard uh, enough time shooting a grouper in a hole. Well, sometimes you can't shoot them because he's up in, wedged inside of a hole in right. an angle. So then you put your spear gun down, you reach in with your hand and catch him. So a lot of guys go, oh, I can't get him. They go home. No. You just you reach know, in there and you grab him. Put on your, make sure you got your glove on, reach in and grab him because he, it goes in a hole like this and sideways. You can't put your, bend your spear gun up in there like that. Right. right. Just you can reach your whole arm up in there. You can reach your arm and turn it up in there and grab him. And you grab him by with whatever you can grab? Usually the tail first. Okay. You want to get your hands in through his gills. Okay. Or get a grip on his gills to work him out. Sometimes you get a grip on him and you can't get the grouper in your hand out of the hole at the same time. So you got to figure it out. Right. I've also caught, you know, like mutton snapper, mangrove snapper. Also, when they go into ledges by hand. And I've caught uh, fish in midwater, like gars, hold a light on them at night and swim down and grab them. I've caught long those guards like that at night, and regular guards actually in the daytime. I've managed to catch them by hand before. Uh, and you'll do that by swimming under the water and get, yeah, yeah. grabbing them? Yeah, you go at night with a light, you shine the light on them, or have somebody shine the light when you let go of your light, mm -hmm. and you ease your hand close to the fish, and you're really, really close to them. Yeah, of course, you got gloves on and wetsuit. Mm -hmm. Grab his bill as fast as you can. But you got to wow. be close to get them. Uh, Mako shark, hand feed it. When he's eating out of your hand, you can reach around and grab it. He's the fastest shark in the world, so you're not going to chase him down. Right, of course yeah. not. You're going to let him. You can bring him to you. Yeah, let him push up into you. And what do you do with the mako shark once you catch it with your hands? You play, hang out with him, and, and enjoy the catch and let it go. So he takes off and you just get you just go for the ride? Yeah, yeah, it takes yeah. off. If you ride him, he'll sound on you. If you tackle him, he tries to jump out of the water. Really? So you're up catching air the whole time, so you're able to st to hold on to him. And then if he's small enough, I can lift him right out of the water. Okay. I was catching and releasing. We were doing video. If I was in the middle of nowhere and there was no video, I would have probably kept the Mako and ate it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, and took it home and trophy, jaws, everything else. So yeah. you're going to get video or meat, one of the two. That's oh, yeah. my mentality. You can't make the two. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I mean, yeah I'm, I'm a hunter sometimes, you know, especially when there's no camera. And then when the camera... You know, then you're catching and releasing, and it's a complete different. You know, when we go out in the water, what are we doing today? Are we gonna right. you're catch filming fish and educating and eat, people? Or are we gonna catch fish to let go? You know, then you you figure out what the game plan is, and that's right. what you do. What do you enjoy more, keeping it for meat, or it's got to be the hunting, right? I I like the hunting. Yeah, I like to keep it, but the videos is good because you can go home and look at your hunt over and over again. Right. So it's it's uh it's awesome. Kind of perfect what you're doing and. What's the biggest fish you've ever caught by hand? Uh, four hundred pound Goliath, close to that. A Goliath grouper. Yeah, it's there's no good video on it. Yeah, I got uh, some pictures of it. What was that like? It was eight people watching, forty feet of water, free diving all day. Yeah. At the end, the fish kept dodging me, dodging me. Finally, he got mad and attacked me, <laughs> and it, he bit. He went inside a cave. He bit me twice and shook me violently. Bit you so where? I, knew, I knew what to do. So I, I was new at, at doing that kind of stuff. So I went up for air, and I went down, and then he swallowed my arm all the way to my shoulder. And then I grabbed the hold of his gill plate, and I started backing up with him. So once I was able to horse him out of the cave, I could move him up as long as I go in circles, spinning all the way back to the surface. We caught him and let him go. Oh I caught six of them by hand. Some of the stuff was seen around on TV and all that. And I remember the federal government asked me. I had a meeting with them. They asked me not to do it anymore. Really? The well, they seen your videos in Yeah, they, well, somebody you. called in, they complained about it and this and that, and then they, they said, you know, the guy said, hey, you know, you're not allowed to do this. Uh, it was an awesome catch, by the way. But <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> but you're not allowed, he said, you have 50%, uh, you have temporary possession of the fish, and they said it was a no-take. Now the state lets you catch them and release them, as okay. long as you don't take them out of the water, so it's a little more, more lenient. The feds may still have the same deal i don't know that's in state waters i know people catch and release them uh, i guess they're gonna hand catch another one i don't know they're yeah. so overpopulated you would think that they would the fe the federal government would, st would start to change that right because they're yeah. everywhere they're waiting for the fishermen to get together have a meeting right and yeah. decide what to do the reason hasn't happened because nobody's really sat down with them and and now they're the game of fish basically works for the hunters and fishermen they're here to preserve the industry so what do you want to do how many glass can you know the idea is to catch Harvest an amount that doesn't destroy the the population. 
So I know that's what they want to do. Just like everything else. So the numbers are high. Okay, you can harvest. Right. You don't want to fish them where you can't find them anymore. Right, of course. You, you want to fish them like the tarpon. You know, they're regulated. Mm-hmm. You can catch them. There's over abundance of tarpon out there. Right. Snook, they're protected. There's tons of snook right. out there. And look at the cold weather that year, how many are killed. What a waste. Shit. Wow. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's... That's the other. I mean, I'm interested in all that stuff. The 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 numbers. I like conservation as far as numbers are concerned. You know, I've, you know, management. I believe right. in, in properly managing. You know, take a certain amount uh, right. when you can, then you don't. Like certain times, certain types of hunting actually increase the animal population. You know, everything's got to be balanced out, and you got to you know you got to know what you're doing. Right. Go out there. I, I like all that stuff. But uh, I like, uh, I've always liked all my, my adventures. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a huge controversy over that kind of stuff, like with the quotas and stuff like that and how, how the well, federal government controls all that kind of like stocks. I think the problem is that everybody has a personal agenda. You know, you got to be fair to everybody. And somebody thinks this way, somebody thinks that way. Uh, you know, you want to, uh, like certain areas, if some guy, divers have, uh, you know, pet glide grouper and they feed it and they all, everybody goes there to take pictures. Okay, maybe that area doesn't need to be opened up. Nobody right. needs to go in there and kill that fish. Right. And then you have another area where there's plenty of out there and, diver, you know, people say, okay, you guys got your, your photography area here and we got a hunting area here. Right. I think that should be, uh, that should be fair. Right, right. You know, there's plenty of water out there and there's plenty of woods. There's plenty of everything right. uh, for everybody. There's plenty of alligators out there. Uh, there's mm-hmm. Florida, there's plenty of bears mm-hmm. more than ever before. There's plenty of wild boar, there's plenty of deer, plenty of fish. Right. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of areas. That we have a lot of Goliath grouper. Um, you know, certain fish are lower than others. Sharks are come back tremendously. There's yeah. Nobody's really fishing. The ocean is actually extremely dangerous right now <laughs> to go spear fishing. I would say. More now than ever? More now than ever. Why is that? Because there's more sharks. More sharks. Why are there so many sharks right now? There, there's no commercial long lining for them. Oh, so the population, many species are protected. The population's increased, increased. Yeah. To the point that, you know. Where there's more sharks. Yeah. Right. I mean, you want high adventure? Go spearfishing. You know, you can <laughs> <Yeah>. be fighting, <laughs> fighting for your life out there. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's it's great. It's, uh, you know, you want the real jungle out there? It's there. It's real. You'll, you'll get eaten out there. <laughs> yeah, we were talking earlier when we were on the phone earlier. You were ta- telling me about, um, I was telling you about, like, surfing in New Smyrna, how the, <laughs> there's literally black tips everywhere, just paddling out. And like right when you get off the beach, before you even get out to the sandbar, they're just hydroplaning okay. through the waves everywhere. I would not do that. I mean, <laughs> you I wouldn't do it? No, there's no biz out there. I wouldn't even want to right, swim no in New Smyrna. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't solve anything for me. The only thing you're going to get out there is you're going to get bit. I mean, it's, uh, it's like Russian roulette out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay, yeah, I served through a pack of sharks today. You know, the next day you, you might get uh, <laughs> killed and eaten, you know. Well, how <laughs> right. often do, do people get bit by sharks? In Florida, New Smyrna. New Smyrna. New Smyrna uh, every is, week, right? Yeah, yeah, every really? week. Yeah, yeah, that's shark attack capital of the world. Really? Never mind Australia and South Africa or any of that. Oh, man, go I didn't New, even know that. You want to get bit? You want to go on the list of surfers? <laughs> to get bit? Go to New Smyrna. <laughs> no, I'm you cool not to, being on that list. <laughs> I was at a surf shop over there, and I asked him, who's been bitten by shark here? And you see all the, the surfers in there all raise their hands. Ah, damn, that's crazy. But I didn't th- even know that. But uh, the thing is, the sharks are a lot smaller, and they're not as dangerous as other places. Okay. A five-foot black that bites your inner leg, you got, cut your artery, you're going to die just as fast if uh, <sighs> a thousand-pound tiger bit you. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're going to die either way. So it... They're still very extremely dangerous. So if your leg's dangling in the water, there's a good chance if that thing bites you, it's going to hit an artery. Yeah, it could hit an artery. You could be okay, but it, it ain't like it's it's not like a a little squirrel bit you or something. No, no, it's a, it's a, <laughs> yeah. it, it can be a, no, it's a bad bite. It, it can be any shark bite is bad. Yeah, any any shark. It, it's got razors in their mouth and they'll cut you up real bad. It's. Uh, Have yeah. you been bit by a shark? Uh, four different kinds. What kinds? Uh, Mako. Uh, lemon, Caribbean reef, and nurse shark. Oh, which one was the worst? The nurse shark. Really? Really. Where where'd they bite you at? My inner thigh. Yeah. Missed my, that artery I was talking about by yeah. a quarter of an inch. <sighs> and it took a, a piece of meat this big out of my leg. God. Oh the doctor had to cut God. the skin loose and stretch it over. He told oh. me, you're going to have to get a, a, a skin graft on that. And it was a three-foot nurse shark. What? He, I Three jumped foot. off the boat on him. He bit, it, latched into my leg, and I pulled him off. 
What a stupid move. Oh. oh, you pulled it off. So, right, you pulled it I pulled him away from me and he ripped the whole uh. thing off. A nurse shark, they say a six foot nurse shark has as much jaw pressure as a thousand pound great white. God damn. In his jaw. I've seen a guy catch one of those right off the shore here on Indian Rocks Beach before. They're okay, but don't they bite you? Sometimes people have been bitten and they've gone to hospital with a shark still latched onto them. With the shark. On them, yeah. They go to the hospital with the shark. Yeah. Another, yeah. another guy rode one, I think, I think bit him in the hand, the arm, held him underwater until he drowned. The shark held him under. The nurse oh, shark, yeah. Damn. It's a powerful, difficult nurse shark to hold on to because he twists and turns every which way. Right. Everybody thinks it's a harmless. He doesn't have any teeth. I don't know where his ideas come from. Yeah. <laughs> There's probably a zillion people been bit by nurse sharks. But they stay near the bottom, right? They don't swim up. Like No, they'll come up. If you're spearfishing, I've had them come up in 40 feet of water and attack me on the surface and trying to take the fish I got. And they're also like nearsighted and like dumb. They'll come up and bite you. I've held my hand in front of them and they latch onto my wetsuit. Ripped it right there. The nurse shark has short teeth. So if, wet, if your wetsuit is loose, he'll pull away from it and you might escape getting injured. Okay. When he bit me in the leg, I didn't have a wetsuit on. Gosh. Oh, damn. And if uh, the wetsuit is tight, he'll cut through it and get you anyways. Oh. But, uh, and it's, again, where he bit you, the infection. Uh, there was a group of divers, I think, they were catching lobsters. One of them pulled a nurse shark by the tail. The nurse shark takes off and bites another diver 10 feet away. It wasn't even the guy that pulled him by the tail. It was just, just pissed off. off. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. So you, yeah, you got a... Um, and how did you get bit by a mako? Tiny little cut on my hand, hand feeding it. Mm. A baby? A ba- no, it's a big mako. A big mako. Huge one. And uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, I was feeding this close. I had a wahoo head on my hand. And he was, I mean, my hand was literally in his mouth. And I was holding onto it. And he's just pulling me around and dragging me. And, he's going like this, and, he's like and finally, the teeth are all hanging out. One of them, you know, I was Snack so close. Finger. He finally sliced, sliced you? Out. Yeah, I cut my finger. So that was like, I can claim a mako bite, but it was like, I mean, it took like a little knife and went right. like yeah. that. You know? That counts as a mako bite. Yeah, that counts. <laughs> it's a mako bite. Yeah. I mean, you're feeding him by hand. Is, oh that counts. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, I had a Caribbean reef shark bite me in the leg from behind, and it felt like I got hit with a machete in my leg. It was a surprise. That day I had a knife tied to my calf, which I never do that. I usually wear them on my waist. Yeah. So it happened to be I'm wearing one there that day, and the Caribbean reef shark bites me, and he bites the knife side of the of the calf, the knife is on in my shin bone. So he crunches down. Oh. So th- the bone and the knife protected him from ripping my leg to pieces. Wow. I got cut. I had blood shooting out and everything, but nothing like if I had, that knife wouldn't have been there. Yeah, he would have taken your calf. Took my calf off, yeah. Oh, it's about, you know, oh. five and a half, maybe six foot uh, Caribbean reef shark. It's, it's like a bull shark. Right. So yeah. I did a tour. I did a thing. We were shooting a... a uh, like a TV pilot in Nassau, and we did uh, one of the shark dives where they basically take they take you out, and then there's a couple guys on the boat, and they they literally they just chum up a ton of sharks behind the boat, and then Caribbean reef sharks. Those are the same sharks. Yeah, and and we were in like a tornado of sharks. They were coming up. They were bumping my camera lens, and, and that's extremely dangerous, extremely unsafe. Uh, people have been bitten out there doing that, especially if you're down current of when you get into water in a shark dive. Where was down current of the blood? In other words, if your fish is here and the current's going this way, you want to be here. If you're down current of the blood, if anybody gets bit, it's going to be the guy who's down there, down the slick. Okay. So that's why people get bit all, all the time. I've heard of many people get bit out there by those Caribbean reef sharks and doing those shark dives and everything. Yeah. Some people never made it home. Some people have been killed. And shark You're just dives. out there, not in a cage or nothing. No, we're, yeah, they, we're surrounded by a tornado of sharks. Like they're big sharks. There was they, like some six footers. I would never. They do, do it that all the time. Shit. They do it all the yeah, time. That's and they, crazy. Uh, no, nah, you know, people want adventure, but right. there's everything shows up there too. There's bulls. I'm not doing that. Hammerheads show up. Tigers show up there, yeah. and everything shows up over there. And they, yeah, they get. I could imagine. Like the one thing I was afraid of was that okay, one bites you, you can get lucky. But if one bites you and there's 30 others right there, wouldn't they all just swarm you and just eat you alive? Well, there's blood everywhere from the food you already got in there. They're already frenzied out. Okay. He may bite you. A bull shark tends to bite again and again and again. Right. Like that. Multiple attacks. He does it. Uh, That Caribbean bit me one huge bite. It only takes one good bite. And and a Caribbean bites you, it'll take 10 pounds of meat off your body. 
You know, that's like your guts could be hanging out there. It, it, anything. It can bite your hand off your leg. It, it's all those sharks are extremely dangerous. I got nothing against shark dives, but yeah. I always tell people, yeah, there's nothing safe out there. No. You may not come back. It's dangerous. Right. I, I People say, oh, you're exaggerating. They're mis no, there's no misunderstood anything. Those things are dangerous fish. Uh, when they're hungry, they'll eat people. Un unlike everybody, alligators eat people. <laughs> people, they don't. They, all these animals, they do that. They're dangerous animals. So they will finish you off. Like, they'll not only take a bite, but they will actually consume you. Well, look at SS Indianapolis. They ate, what was 600 people or something like that? What was that? What was that, what was that one? That ship sunk in World War II. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I did hear about that. I, I think it was a bunch of tiger sharks were out there eating everybody in the middle of the Pacific. Yeah, they, they'll eat you. <laughs> they, uh, oh. Yeah, it's... Those and, and also the uh, the oceanic blue, oceanic uh, oceanic blue and oceanic white tip. Okay, the blue tips and the, the white the tip. The blue is cold, cooler water, and then the oceanic white tip uh, is a little warmer. But you know they'll go either way. You know, okay. They they crisscross uh, territory. You okay. Know, and if the water's warm. The blues go deeper. Okay. Like makos, yeah, they like cooler water, but they'll come up and feed if okay. the action's coming up there, and then they'll go down to their depths. Okay. That's what they'll do. So those those are the ones that basically a sink a, a ship sinks people go overboard those are the ones that are well, circling you ready to eat. I I like open ocean sharks because they come in hungry, more aggressive. If you're going to film or interact with them, that's a good candidate. And they're fast. They're yeah, they're they're very ag they're more aggressive. Like okay. coastal sharks have food m around them more often okay. than the ocean sharks. So okay. the ocean sharks are more hungrier and sooner or later they're going to want to make a meal of whatever is there. Wow. So how do you deal with those sharks if they're if they're hungrier and more aggressive? Like what is well, like what do you do to to interact with them and, and not get eaten? Well, when I go out there, my idea is to get the sharks to try to eat me and get them as aggressive as possible. When I was doing the shows and all that stuff, is right. to turn that into the most uh, horrifying feeding frenzy you could ever imagine. That was the whole idea. And are you so not scared you're, when you're doing that? Well, I'm not scared until one of them bit me in half. Then I probably would be uh, <laughs> scared at the moment. I actually, I'm I'm enjoying every second of it. It's you just, love it, right? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, and then well, when thrill. I feel like I've had enough, it's enough. I don't want to push. You don't. Luck. You know okay. when to not push. Yeah, it too I got far. thirty hand feeds or something like that. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done for the day. Mm -hmm. We got enough action. Let's just get out get out of here. It, yeah, it's it's fun, but you got to be alert because any any minute something can go wrong. But yeah, it it's not a, yeah. The, don't if you want to stay safe, don't do what I'm doing. But if you want to see the sharks and you want action, you gotta you know stir it up out there. Right. Uh, make yeah. it happen. Yeah. That's that's the whole idea. Holy or you're not shit. gonna get you know uh, shark attacks and you right. know, you're not gonna see that that side of it. Yeah. And if you're spear fishing, when all that's going down, certain areas you got every fish in the oceans around you at the same time. So if you're there spear fishing while there's a shark feeding, man, it's just everything's showing up. It's the best time to, to hit a fish. It's just insane what's going on out there. Really? So I've been scraping fish for hour after hour after hour, calling in. Everything is within miles around to come there. Really? Yeah. When sharks think, when you're ripping a fish apart, sharks think you're a shark eating. And nothing attracts a shark more than somebody else eating. <laughs> yeah. And I take the knife like that. And he thinks I'm devouring that. And so he wants to get a piece of that action before it runs out. Right. And they go into a competitive mode. Okay, and that's what makes it uh, makes it happen. That's insane. So you, th another thing you were telling me earlier was that you would much prefer to have a shark encounter while you're spearfishing versus if somebody were surfing. If you're a diver, you can defend yourself uh, from a shark a lot better than a surfer or a swimmer. A surfer or a swimmer are sitting ducks. That's why I don't want to go swimming in New Smyrna because <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like I've been, you know. I, I, all my defenses are gone. Right. right. But Even if you don't have a spear gun, though, and you're diving, you think you have a better chance? Yeah, if you're diving, yeah, because you can always hit the shark with your hands. You can charge him. If you go right. out at a shark, swim towards him, you'll frighten him. Really? Yeah, because he thinks you're going to hurt him. So if you swim away from him, he's going to attack you. He thinks you're prey trying to get away. So uh, the worst thing you can do from a shark is <clears throat> run like crazy away from him. Then you're going to instigate an attack. Can you pull up that video? Type in uh, Mick Fanning. This is what I was telling you about. The guy Mick Fanning was in the surf, surf contest in Jeffreys Bay, South Africa. And he was sitting out there waiting for a wave by himself. And all of a sudden, you just see him get pulled under. And yeah, watch this. He's a sitting duck. And you can see the fin come up. I think it was the, one of the uh, pectoral fins come up. Watch them. It grabs his leash, like the leash that connects his foot. There he is right there. Yeah, that, see, he's totally helpless right there. 
If he was a mask and fins and a stick in his hand, he would have been able to fight that shark. Now watch he starts hauling ass swimming as fast as he can. Yeah, that that normally, if it was like a Caribbean reef shark or a bull shark or something What's like that, that, that would get him attacked. The great white may not, but yeah, uh, apparently uh, one of those, a bull them, shark or a Caribbean would have, would, have, would have come back at him and really? nailed him. Oh, yeah. What kind of shark was that? It was a that was white. a great white. Great white, yeah. The bull has, they say, three times the jaw pressure. In his bite of a great white. Really? Yeah. It's a very bad bite. What would you have um, done in that situation if you were him? <laughs> I, I wouldn't have. I'm you would have never been in that you situation. You wouldn't have swam away. Yeah, for one you would, you minute, wouldn't you, be you in the situation. You don't have much visibility there. Yeah, I wouldn't have been surfing. <clears throat> right. Now, I was going to tell you something before I forget. If, you're, if I'm luring in sharks for feeding and, and scraping meat and drawing, creating a shark feeding frenzy, I'm probably safer doing that than if I am just randomly spearfishing. Because, okay, you spear group in a hole. Where your head's under the rock and your feet are hanging out, trying to get the group out of the hole, you're 100% vulnerable. If there's a bull shark in the area, he's going to attack. That's when he's going to get you. So, as a shark, dive, if I'm shark diving, I want the sharks to be there. When I'm right, you're fishing, expecting them coming. You're aware of them. Yeah, no, you're right. aware of them, and you're in de you can defend yourself because you you that's all you you're looking out for them. That's expecting it. it. When you're spear fishing, I don't want to see sharks. Yeah, right. I don't, you're not I'm looking. not I'm not aware because when you're focusing to get a fish. At that moment, that's the when the sharks come up. Shark likes to bite when he, you're not looking at him, mm. like all predators. Okay. They, these animals, they're looking for a meal. Now, what makes animals dangerous is how hungry they are. <laughs> Sometimes sharks are not hungry; they're not going to bother you. Yeah. You know, the hungrier the animal, what motivate, uh, motivates a, a lion or a tiger or, or an alligator, or crocodile, or shark to eat somebody is how hungry is that animal, how desperate. You know, when you when you're really, really hungry, you're ready to eat anything. Yeah. I don't like that food. I, you know, I'd rather have a steak, but I'll eat that rotten hamburger because I'm really hungry. So you, there's no exceptions. When a shark is really hungry, he'll make a meal of what's there. People seen him trying to eat a log in the ocean. They're so hungry. Wow. So That's have you been in the situation where you're having a shark charge at you and you, char you charge back at it? Yeah, it's all yeah. my life. Yeah, and so, life. and and so what? They just get they get scared of you charging back at them. Or yeah, what do you do? You just run face to face to them. We do it all the time. We run them off, or they steal your fish. <clears throat> yeah, you know, you run them off, or, or they'll bite you. Don't run from them, because you can leave the area, but you you got to watch your back. Remember, he wants a bite when you you can defend yourself when you see it coming. Same thing with an alligator. Yeah, you can levitate a charging alligator, but if you, the one that bit me. It was an ambush. I never saw him. Right. I was too lazy to look behind me. But if I would have seen him coming, I've had alligators go after me. And at the last minute, I get low in the water and I grab him by the shin. I tilt the head up and that disrupts our attack. It confuses the alligator. And you usually do that a couple of times, it'll warp the attack. I had one try to take me down 10 times before. I mean, I could have left the water and then it'll stop. But every, right. as long as I was there, he kept coming around. He tried going underwater at, at me on the surface, different styles of attack. And really? I was able to block them every single time on the attack by uh, grabbing. You got to make sure you don't put your hand in his mouth when he's coming at you at the last minute. You got to grab that skin down there. I mean, don't go try this on your own. I won't. Or, yeah. I'm not going unless I'm you're there. Yeah, you do not. this, if all of a sudden your boat broke down and you're swimming and you got attacked in the last resort, it's good right. to know something like that. Yeah, definitely. But don't. I'm not telling you to go look for these opportunities, <laughs> <I'm not>. you know. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, I, I took karate lessons. I'm going to go to a bar and pick a fight. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Might, no. you know, somebody will beat your butt or you might get shot in the head. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> something like that, you know. Is there a video we can see of you of you levitating an alligator? I'm uh, sure that one, that's the top probably, one, top yeah, one. that's probably the largest alligator I ever levitated in my life. Wow. Where's uh, this How at? big is this one? I'd say it's 13 foot plus. I had an uh, alligator expert look at me in the video and everything. See, I'm talking about them. I was on my way home. We were filming, you know, just whatever you could find, fish, yeah, gators, anything, you know, okay. trying to do a, a good, you know, nature show. Right. Uh, Where is this in Florida? Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of hydrilla in this area. Okay. The hydrilla, a lot of times the water is clear, but what a hydrilla does is it, it covers everything. It's like a spongy jungle. Right. And, you know, look, look see, the alligators and all kinds of animals can disappear into the hydrilla. Right. And it grows off the bottom? Yeah, it comes out the bottom. That's about 25 feet in the bottom of the canal. Wow. I can't believe how clear it is. Yeah. Hydrilla, I think, clears the water, too. Okay. 
Oh shit! Yeah, he, see, he arches his back. So. Oh, that means he's he's yeah. pissed. Well, he's not going the other way. He's coming our direction. Yeah. <gasps> so instead of uh, okay. leaving, he's, he's interested. Yeah, he's headed right to us. Oh fuck. At this time, I was already lost my finger in my left hand. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my God. He's huge. I do another good lift on him, too. Where you, I really show him well, though. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. That's you, you saw a slow motion. Yeah. What is that thing? Like a thousand pounds? I said a thousand pounds. It's it's a massive uh, animal. There's a lot of fish in that area. So now he doesn't want to be messed with. Now he's like, fuck that. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> no, no, he's not, he's not sleeping. He's just going to lay down there. Okay. I, I, uh, I'm gonna, I go down and pet him and everything and try to budge him. And, and really? I, I can't even. I, I do a thing where I grab him by the scoots and I lift him off the, off the bottom gently. Okay. And he's so heavy, I can't, I can't really? even budge him. Yeah, I can't even grip him. I get a grip on him. Yeah, I lost my fins like that. I need to get me a new pair of those. A bodyboard <laughs> fins. Yeah, I know. Those yeah, are the same yeah. boogie board and fins. That's what they call. Uh, I, you don't get them in dive shops. You got to go to a surf shop. Surf yeah, shops, yep. yeah. I found out the best thing to use out there is not those long free diving fins. No, they're the, the short, short ones. ones. The short for maneuvering around alligators yeah. and sharks. You want that? Yep. You want the yep. short ones. Uh, I'm not into the going deep now. I'm into they're messing with, uh, with the animals, so I don't need the long fin. You, you right. have no traction with it. Right. right. I got to goose them, get out of there because I don't, I can't get in front of them. He's facing the bank, and I I don't have any room, you know. And you couldn't pull him out. You, he's so you heavy. have to stay on. You have to stay under under his jaw, under his head. You don't want to be directly here because that's where he's going to jump up and get you. Oh, okay. I like to get below him. Best place to be with an alligator is underneath that. Under, gator. okay. His eyes are above his head. See. Yep. See how little the eye looks compared to the skull <sighs> that tells you how big that alligator is. That thing's a moose. Because I, I, what happens is, the the head will grow the size of the eye. Really? Yeah, like a little alligator's got an eye that looks like a frog. Yeah, it pops tiny, out. It's big. Yeah, tiny little head with two big eyes on it. It looks like a frog. And then when it grows, you know, the Barely eye. see the yeah, eye. Yeah, because uh, it's still a big eye, but the head, that's how big he is. The head is so much bigger. Holy shit, he's darting. Okay, now, yeah. Yeah, he's already uh, freaking out. So he's going to dive into the hydrilla forest. He said, I found the wrong human to mess with. <laughs> He's I, like, I, I was do, just trying to see what was going on over here. I do fucking many twigs him. over here. I do one or two lifts on him, and then I leave him alone. I don't want to stress him out. If you do right, yeah. too much of that, he's going to come back at you. Okay. And, you know, I'm not, I'm just interacting. I'm not really, uh, you know, hunting the alligator, so I have yeah. no, no need to. That is a <clears> price <throat> gator. A gator like that is already bred, though. I, I saw him, and he's, so, and he's, I think he's over here. He was so big. That, that we saw two different spots. I found where the tail was, and Quete found where the where the head was. <laughs> really? So I got. I, it's a big mound of hydrillas. I'm gonna go in. I gotta go inside the hydrilla now to look for him. And oh my him. god! Now watch him. When I bring him straight up, I'm gonna put him in tonic immobility. Okay. So you're just going into the. Okay. Yeah. Okay, into I'm, the plants I'm already, and trying uh, to find I'm him. I'm reaching out for him. See? <laughs> the plants, <laughs> whatever they're called. <laughs> Oh my God! That's my left hand right there. Look how big that head is! Yeah, look, yeah holy shit! Now, right, see how he looks more calm? Yeah. He's right now the head is straight up. This is kicks in tonic immobility. Now he just hit the surface. Now he explodes. <sighs> the minute I took him up and he started to tilt his head back, he went off like a stick of dynamite. And I told, I told, quit that. Let's forget it. Let's. We're done. We're done. Yeah. Look at that thing. Oh, my God. That thing's a this dinosaur. Is, is a producer running That's what along. it looks like. It looks like a look, dinosaur. Look, look, he's running along the bank watching it. He... Wow. 
Wow. I bet you were safer underwater than you were on the bank, right? I was just thinking about uh, what if this gator guts gets no, up on land you, right if there? If they want you, they'll get you underwater above. Uh, alligators okay. hunt underwater. Okay. Yeah. People don't know that. They do. Uh, they'll sit in the bottom with their mouth open waiting for fish to come nearby and they lash onto Oh, them. really? And I've also seen him chasing a soft shell turtle trying to catch it underwater. And they've had him attack me underwater. I've They're never seen. Fast I've never land, seen a though, video right? of a gator eating underwater before. I mean, you only see really, you only really see gators attacking stuff on land. No, they they do it underwater, but there's not too many people down there. Uh, right, exactly. It, there's not people down there. Right, you got to be down there twenty right, at night, yeah. catching the feeding time. But they're eating fish left and right down there. They got to come up to swallow it. They don't oh, really? swallow underwater because their throat locks down there. They don't want to let water in. Okay. Their system. That's how they control, or else they can fill up with water and drown. Oh shit! So they just grab it while they're down there, and then they come up to the surface to actually eat it. You want to see the makos? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, okay, go up, up. This is my best shark day ever. Your best shark day. I've had good ones. That how far offshore is this? About fifty miles. Okay. Off San Diego. Off San Diego. Yeah, it's in California. That's where you find a lot <laughs> of makos and blues. I mean, it's a magnificent. That s- thing is huge. L- look at the shape of his body and his tail. It's almost like he's un- he's not real. Yeah, you know? no. it looks like such a the uh, it's such a design, such a cool looking yeah uh, fish. Amazing. And that's just a little one there, right? Yeah, I'm gonna hang catch that one, and then I'm gonna catch a bigger one. In that segment, yeah. I. I ride, I ride one, I hand feed blues. It was six makos and three blues showed up that day. At first, they were chasing each other off. The big ones were running off the small ones. And then later on, they got comfortable with each other, and then they started hanging out. Oh, this is the bigger oh one, right? Oh, my God. No, no. no, that's a little one. That's a little one. That's the little one still? Yeah, it's look, still at its, look at its eyes, how big uh, they are. Yeah. Yeah, at uh, Oceanic Vision. Now, the bigger makos... We'll eat the blues and and uh, the baby uh, makos also. Really? They'll cannibalize their own kind. Yeah, that's one of the few animals that actually eat each other, right? Like, uh, there's not many pre- like gators. Do gators eat other gators? Yeah. The, the, that scene when they showed over again. That's when I was ready to catch them. <sighs> I was gonna really catch up mako. What about the gators? You said I was gonna say like uh, sharks are one of the few predators that cannibalize each other. Is that right? Or do a lot of them? Gators do it. Gators do it too. Lions uh, do it. Bears do it. Oh shit! That thing's like a little torpedo. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it can jump twenty feet in the air. Is uh, world's fastest shark. Yeah. And it's warm blooded too. It's got the ability to warm its blood up. It's warm. It's really? Not, it's not cold-blooded like the other sharks. That's the only shark that's like that? No, I think the other members of his family might be like that too. The great white may have that ability oh, okay. also, yeah. There's five mackerel shark members. Mackerel shark members? Yeah, which is... Pelagic, mako, like, like... Well, in that family, it's great white, <clears throat> uh, short fin mako, long fin mako, and uh, poor beagle. Hmm. Oh my God! So you just caught and that salmon by hand. and a salmon shark. The other member, yeah, I just caught it. Yeah, look at this thing. That's sand fishing. You noodled a mako. Well, you can't you can't <laughs> noodle him through his mouth. He'll he'll cut your hand off. Oh, you yeah. got to grab his body. Now he's not uh, as slippery as yeah, if you got gloves on. His skin feels it's like almost like sandpaper, so right. you get a grip on it, which is nice. But yeah, you got to <laughs> grab. That's him. nice. Yeah, you got to grab him like that because uh, that guy right there will. Knock your fingers right off. Jeez. You know, if you, yeah, you don't want him to bite you. He can kill you. So I released him. He stayed with us the rest of the day, even after really? I caught him. Yeah, he, he didn't care. There's a blue. That's a blue. That's a scary fucking shark right there. Well, they're all scary, but. Dill, if you offer him your hand, he'll bite it off you. He'll bite it. He'll take it. If you let him bite you, he will bite you. <coughs> you can't let him bite you. Are these suits you're wearing, are they kind of like bite-proof a little bit and stuff? Or no, or no they're just regular wetsuits? No, it's the same thing special. you use when you're surfing. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it's a wetsuit. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it's like butter. See, see, I'm riding that one. Oh, my God. I can't lie. That would probably be a super cool feeling right there to ride a shark, but I'm still not you trying can. it. I mean, <laughs> you were there. I would tell you, go ahead and catch a ride. You know? God, yeah, that would be cool. 
Yeah, you were saying they sound. If you grab onto them, they'll sound. The Mako, yeah, but you still get it right. You just, okay. You know, you hold your breath, you let go when you think it's time to go. He'll keep going with you. If you overdo it, he may he may come back at you. you really? Know, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you put on a, a tank and stayed on him on him on him the whole time, yeah. he may eventually get mad and say, enough of enough, and he'll turn around and... <laughs> now, when you catch one... Yeah, that, that could have been a disaster there. Getting, Getting tangled up. in that rope it, and stuff. It could have been a disaster there. I almost got bit by blue that day too. Uh, Robin almost got uh, got bit by blue that day too. The producer. Is this a Mako? Yeah. God, that's freaking terrifying. See, he didn't take the bait. I think this is the one. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna catch him. No, I think this is the one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand catch this one. How big is this one? He's pretty big. Watch. See, I got him already. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jeez. That's crazy. <laughs> what the Yeah, he's beating hell? the heck out of me. Yeah. I, I told the guys, if I hand catch a Mako... He's gonna drag me all over the ocean, and he's gonna, because I'm tilted one side. He's gonna end up right back by the, by the boat again. Right. So he's gonna take me in a huge circle. Quit it when chasing me. But I said, if you wait by the boat, you're gonna catch him. You're gonna catch him coming right to you. <sighs> Robin was there, waiting for me. I don't know what he got on footage, but see, there's Robin with the camera. Waiting. Oh, yeah. He's back at the boat. You still now, got this I, thing. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let him go now. See. Now again, we got. If I wanted to keep him, I would have told the guys get a rope and just put a rope around his tail and just boat him. But yeah. um, you know, we're we're not we're not getting meat. We're getting video. Right, right. Some people want you to release the, sh the shark. Some people don't. At this time, I'm there. You know, we're entertaining the public. I'm right. Yeah. Feeling my personal challenge. Right. But I'm doing uh, a feeling. Look at the size of this one here. Holy shit! This one here, I'm gonna I'm gonna I try to put him and put, roll him on his back. Yeah. And I'm gonna ride him backwards. I lift <sighs> his head out of water. I'm gonna flip him. He didn't go into tonic and mobility, but I did flip him. A lot of the stuff the producer wrote for me to say, you know. So oh, really? Whatever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I'm out there talking, it's me talking, and then yeah. whatever. He, they, he'll they listen feed you to some, some stuff. stuff, and then he, he, yeah, he feeds me stuff. He, he writes stuff in there, which is okay, you know. I don't, I don't yeah. care. What do you want me to say? I'll say Gets it. the people going. Yeah. But uh, right now, I'm going to tell you what's, what's going on. Right. Like he th what he think might be a right is a catch for, you know, different things. Like right. That. Now, is there any shark that you can't cannot eat? Cannot eat? Like cannot like that's not good to eat. Uh, the, the Greenland shark, you have to boil it. They say, uh -huh. in order to uh, to eat it, it's because it's poisonous. But you boil the heck out of it, you can eat it. There's people up there eat it. Okay, it's a weird Greenland look, shark. Greenland shark, yes, yeah, cold, cold, cold water shark. There's a blue at it, but uh, <sighs> overall, I mean, you can eat a hammerhead. It tastes like lousy. You can eat a bull shark. I've eaten it. It tastes terrible. See, really, you almost got me there. No, here's no here's when it, where it happens. I think no, no, this is the other one. See, I'm gonna flip him now. That's, okay, that's a big make there. See, and this is where you, he it's like paralyzed when you flip him. No, 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 he, he didn't go paralyzed. See, he's still swimming, but I oh, rolled yeah. him on. I oh, got him sure. upside down. That's crazy. It's, oh my! You know, it's like having you know. Let's just you're dancing. Yeah, I'm playing right. with sharks. Wow, it's a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, man, you're a psycho. <laughs> Can you do that stuff with dolphins? <laughs> Uh, they seem like a lot nicer. I had fed a mahi mahi. No, you don't. You don't. Dolphins in captivity <clears throat> are mean, smart, and mean as heck. It's just like killer whales. They end up killing somebody. You but, swam with killer whales, right? Yes. It's probably the most dangerous thing out there. Killer whales kill most dangerous animal kill, in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. They kill great white sharks, probably in the planet. They kill. Uh, they kill blue whales. They gang up on them and kill them. They kill other whales. They kill everything that lives out there. Don't, and they've. Kill, oh, we don't know if they killed anybody. Yeah, because the people got killed. Went around to tell you what happened. Right, they, right. They killed three trainers over at uh, Sea World. At Sea World, yeah. So that tells, it is a dangerous animal. You know, none of the other pets out there have done that. Okay, so it was a wild caught killer whale, and it killed three trainers eventually. And they were playing with them too, or at least one of them. Like one of them was like toying with the guy before he killed him. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they they'll toy with their food supply out there. They call them killer whales for for a reason. Right, no shit. Right, it's not a misunderstood animal. That Free Willy got the. Uh 
got them all looking happy and nice and friendly and stuff. Yeah, that was they're fake advertising. Even, it, it kills bottomless dolphins. They kill. They torture animals. They just they're horrific animals. <laughs> I mean, they're cool. They live out there. They're part of nature and all that. Uh, so God you created. thought you thought why not jump in the water with them? Well, we're doing uh, I'm with those with uh, the Jackass Wild Boys. Yeah, and you know we're you got to do the adventure. You got to step it up. Right. So okay, we're coming up with ideas. And sometimes things just got better and better. <laughs> and that's the first time you probably did that, right? Yes, that's so, the first time in my life I've ever so seen you a nervous? Uh, wild killer whale. Are you I, nervous I'm going a, into that because you never did it before? You've never seen a it A little before? bit. I was anxious to get in. I felt but like... you wanted to do it, right? Well, I want to do it. I want to, you know, okay, let's get some action. I'm yeah. to a point when I'm like <laughs> getting to a point, I, okay, I'm tired of waiting around. Let's yeah, get let's into do it. This. When I'm going to do something, okay, you get that feeling, you get fired up. Yeah. It's just like uh, adrenaline. Uh, adrenaline. Yeah, it's just like a guy who's going to do something else. You know, people do the right. same thing. He's going to jump something on a motorcycle. Right. Which motorcycle I wouldn't do. jumps. That's what I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, I wouldn't do it's that. Like a I drill, would rather swim with a killer whale. Adrenaline junkie. Uh, yeah, they got adrenaline junkies or jumping off an airplane without a parachute, things right. like that. You, you know, you, okay, I don't want to wait around. Let's get get, a, get get with it. So I saw the killer whales. Let me get in. Okay, this is good. Let's get uh, everybody in there, you know, and... Start filming, and so you get out there with them, and what what is that like? You guys ride out, you find them finally, and and you just jump uh, in with yeah, them. Yeah, you ride around with a boat that is specialized in whale watching in Alaska. They tourists, yeah, they take tourists to watch whales. You're not supposed to go up to them, so I told the guy, okay, they're headed that way. Drop me off in their path. Okay, so they dropped you off in front of them. Yeah, so we don't harass the whales, and then right. the whales come to you, and then it was okay. So what the hell happened when you had a school of killer whales coming at you? Two of them came by, had a really good close look at me. And that was it. The water, I could only see like six feet max. Really? It was green. That's probably the worst part about it. Is green <sighs> and dark, dark, dark green. And this is just you or you're with Steve-O and, and Chris then? Or? Camera guy, Steve-O. Uh, Chris, Steve-O didn't get in. Chris. Chris got in? Yeah, I got him in with the grizzlies and I got him in with the killer whales. Steve-O wouldn't do it. No, Steve was in a bear outfit. The other one, Steve <laughs> is he likes he do, he likes he'd rather set himself on fire than mess like with a tiger or lion. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? He doesn't. He's not uh, dangerous animals. Is yeah. not his thing. But if he's gonna jump off a cliff, blow himself up with dynamite, or hurt himself severely, shoot a rocket or, out of his ass. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or 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 eat an omelet made out of vomit or something like that. Right. Uh, yeah. He's down with that. Yeah. But. Is uh, he'll do the animals? You got. I've done a lot of animal stuff with him. I put him on a surfboard and had sharks swarming around him, and the sharks were attacking the surfboard, biting on it, pulling on it. So we're gonna see if surfers get attacked in mid ocean. I mean, a stupid thing to do. So the way to make it happen, we tied a bunch of fish to a surfboard and put them out there and let them float out there. So of course the water's boiling around him with sharks feeding. It's like yeah. 25 sharks are in the water, all feeding on a surfboard, and these duskies come in, about eight of them, giants. One of them grabbed the whole wall of fish and surfboard, and Steve was a monster coming. Steve jumps off the surfboard, and the shark drags the surfboard under. Oh, oh man! My God. I mean, the whole surfboard sunk. I'm talking about you know probably 800 pound <clears throat> dusky. Did those guys ever take any bad injuries from any of that stuff? They do. They're, the idea for me was something to get injured, but not too too bad. Right. But you, you know, kind of want them to get bit once in a while. Or you, stuff, you by know? certain things, I don't want them missing <laughs> yeah. certain anybody. things. <laughs> I don't want them missing body parts. You know, right. like I, I wouldn't let uh, Johnny Knoxville get bit by rattlesnake, even though he really wanted to. Yeah. Uh, things I got, I don't. You know, the idea is to get some. Uh, like when he got bit by the anaconda, okay, he he can handle that. Yeah. He Isn't wanted that, to get bit by a rattlesnake. Yeah. An eastern diamondback. What the? And saying you were like, no way. No, it might have killed him or amputated right. his arm. Right. You know, he needs his arm. Yeah. And then, uh, but. But the anaconda, I knew he, he wasn't going to complain about it. He'll, he don't mind the pain. Okay, a 14-foot anaconda just... And so wow, he got bit by an like anaconda? Time. Yeah. Johnny Knox six, killed it? Six times. They used three in the video. On the, on the Where? Where did he is, get bit? In the arm. In the uh, arm? I think I saw that video. Yeah, it's, it's on the Jackass 2. Yeah, Jackass 2. Uh, yeah. The ball pin, whatever. Yeah, yep. The two anacondas were hiding under the, the balloons, you know, and they went in there to play with them. God damn. It was a huge anaconda, yeah. Out of all the deadly man-eating predators in this world, which one is your is your absolute favorite? Would you say, or could you could you pick one? I don't know. Mm. You know, it's it all depends. It's yeah. it's hard to to say that. There's a lot of cool. Like people say, what's the most dangerous thing? I don't know. What's the cool? I, it's all good. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of good. cool. <clears throat> yeah, I like the big fish. I like uh, like I told you, I want to go uh, a dive trip for, for me right now. I like to go spear some mullet. Some mullet, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chill, relaxing like that. Yeah. You know, is there any animal fish. you don't mess with? Is there one that you're like, I'm, 
Like uh, Manny Pue won't even touch that. Like, uh, funnel spider, Brazilian walking spider. I don't like the spider. I don't want nothing to do with no spiders. spiders. No. Yeah, screw that. Right. It's probably hard to defend yourself from a spider. Yeah, no, They're I don't like it, but you're sleeping and they bite you when you're in bed. Like brown recluse. Yeah. Uh, okay, there's a brown recluse in the room. I don't want to go to sleep there because you're sleeping and it bites you. I mean, I like things that I can see or right. interact with. You know, Maybe like, if spiders were like 10 feet tall and like out Then the you'd wood. wrestle one. <laughs> I don't, I don't I don't, they, they're creepy. Yeah, yeah they, they are. are. I don't like them. Most of the people <laughs> like me don't like spiders. I'm not the only one. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no, I don't like spiders top either. Top notch uh, animal yeah. uh, wranglers and all that. They, yeah. None of them like spiders. And you were you were telling me also about your experience with out swimming bears in the water. You said that you had to you had to if get away I, from a bear. No, not get away. Go go at them. If I have to get away from them, I can. If I have fins on, I cannot swim a bear. Without fins, a bear will swim faster than me. That's insane. I, you, that's unbelievable to think a bear could swim faster than than a human, especially they're, if it was yeah, they're like fast. You. Well, I mean, I didn't go to the Olympics, and I yeah. Johnny Weissmuller or whatever is right. swimming. But with fins, yeah, with fins, I can definitely power away, no problem. And how and how did you end up in the water next to a bear? Uh, wh- wh- how did that happen? I volunteered. I got in. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking in. for the. I bear. swam with grizzlies and I swam with black bears. Wow. I never did get to swim with a polar bear. I don't know if I want to go out there and freeze out there either. Right. You know, I mean, I like a friend of mine told me, you go up there, you catch a pneumonia, you're in the middle of that country out there, yeah, <laughs> you're done. Right. I mean, I had a when I was in Alaska, I had a good wetsuit. I was comfortable in it. With a okay. good wetsuit, you can take it. Right. But uh, yes, I don't know how how far, but it's yeah, I've done some. I mean, a lifetime of that stuff. I've focused yeah. a lot of my artwork right now. Okay. Yeah. I need my hands to do artwork. Right. Yes. So, so you're not um, trying yeah, to lose them anymore. You have yeah, not. You got nine fingers left. Yeah. I don't. I don't yeah. want to lose it any anything more. I got a lot of a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, you know, to it, do a lot of artwork. Yeah. And it's, your 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 tridents that you've been doing that's that's very similar to art. I mean, they are pieces of art. Yeah. Definitely. They are work. Yeah. I like I like tridents. I like spears. Yeah. I also make uh, bronze statues of like alligators, uh, sharks. I made a Goliath group out of bronze. I've done stuff really? like that. Yeah, and I've, I I do authentic looking pieces in bronze. I like doing that. I do a little bit of wood carving mm-hmm. also, but I, I do like making my knives, uh, you know, my jewelry, my own special line of jewelry. Yeah. My weapons, I make my necklaces. I wear them all the time. It's like the one you have on your neck, on your uh, Yeah, this is a right uh, fish skeleton hand carved. That thing's uh, so cool. Super yeah, cool. I, I wear stuff like this. this so what, do you get a big block di- of steel? This is done from a, a half-inch thick plate of steel. And then I, I cut it open like this, and I just I cut it with a grinder like if it was wood, basically. Right. With a metal cutting grinder. Yeah, let's bring the trident over here. Let's look at the trident. Yeah. So yeah. This is, about, this is what you fish with now. Yeah, I fish with this. This is an aquatic... Uh, weapon. So you, I put a fish in here because yeah. this is for a fish hunter. Right. So this is like, you know, right. pirates have the skulls of people. I don't right. want human skulls. I put right. a fish skeleton. Right. And this is an, a, a nautical uh, piece of equipment. It represents, you know, uh, underwater hunting. Water is that hunting. The, why, why the... Uh, it's a like, classic. I love classics. Yeah. yeah. I love classics. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Is there is there a reason for the three the three prong design like that, or is that sort of just like for That's, for novelty, kind of just like Poseidon or Zeus hmm. would well, have something like that? It's it's designed for catching fish, but it has a novelty. It's a classic. Right now, if you have one point, and you throw out a fish, you might miss. If you okay. got three points, it's more likely you're going to get it. Okay, yeah. you have a better chance of hitting it. And then I have a story about that also. And then what happens? You got three of them gripping on it, so it holds the fish better. So it's designed okay. to get a better grip on the fish. It's, it's, okay. it's a fishing weapon. Okay. It's not used, not really for people. Gladiators use them on each other. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. They were in the arena and they were sticking each other God. with tridents, which is not cool. No. Now, i have probably the first one to use them for boar hunting because I kept missing a lot of my shots throwing a single point spear at a boar. Okay. But the trident is more accurate and it's got a more of a spread. So it's basically a shotgun versus a rifle. So you're throwing close, okay, and you can't aim it like a rifle. You right. throw it. So when I have a, a big trident spread out like this, mm-hmm. throwing at a boar, you have more of a spread going at him. Right. So if you're a little off, you're still gonna get him. Okay. And then when you get him, he can't run as well with him because it, it traps his heavy. His, 
it traps the arm against a, the rib cage. When you spear uh, a boar with a single point, he runs so fast, he could be on you real quick and put you in the hospital in about two seconds. So what I would do, i throw a trident at him, and then i use another spear to kill him. As to finish him. To finish him, yeah. It, 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 the whole thing's over real quick. Okay. But he's not going to get away. When you hit him with a trident, he turn around and he's coming at you. Once I thought you had to be close to an animal to kill it with a bow and arrow, but for this, yeah, you, you have to be extre- like, you got to be like, how close? 10 to 12 feet away. Wow. So that's another reason it's so dangerous. You don't have that much time. No. I hit one charging at me and he hit me here and both of my feet went flying in the air. He would have hit me here, he would have killed me. With the butt of my spear, he hit me. Oh my and uh, yeah, caught my shoulder. I tried to catch him. I remember the last thing I saw, he was running at me full blast, I better throw now. <laughs> so I throw, he's coming at me about 30 miles an hour, I imagine. I hit him, it hits him and he's, the spear stuck in him, so he's running like a, all of a sudden he's like a unicorn. With the spear yeah, <laughs> coming oh, at you. Com- so I, I tried to catch the butt to keep him off me, I missed it, and it went boom, and both of my feet went flying, and everybody was throwing spears and panic. And really? Else. Yeah. Nobody uh, had a gun or anything? No. no. I don't want him with a gun there, because in the commotion, I got nothing against guns. Guns are great, but in a situation like that, somebody gets excited, bullets just start flying everywhere. Somebody yeah, you don't know where they're coming from. Where they're already, yeah, because it's chaos. Right. You know, now we're all shooting this way <laughs> like that. You know, a lot of times if it's in a certain cir- situation, yeah, it's good to, to have a gun always. Mm-hmm. But uh, one time a, a boar attacked a Quitty and Robin pulled up, pulled a handgun out and pow, 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 and fired it, you know, try right. to keep the hog off him. Right. I th- I'm thinking somebody's going to get hit. Yeah, <laughs> so everybody was packing a, a handgun out there, you know, and somebody's mm-hmm. going to get hit. Yeah. Another guy got attacked by a boar. He pulled out his 45. The boar and... Uh, he shot at the, the board. He sc- the bullet scraped off the board's head. The board knocked him down, gun and all. It was a disaster. And later on, we found out the bullet had glanced off the board's head. So the board got up, and I told everybody, get him. They got him with the spears. No way. Yeah, we took some people out hunting, and, it, and uh, yeah, it was chaotic. <sighs> I've seen that, uh, that happen before. Jeez. So I'd rather, you know, if you're up in a tree stand waiting for the board with a gun, fine. But when you're in there in that kind of commotion, people like that, yeah. do you have a handgun? Yeah, if you're maybe by yourself. Yeah. yeah. When there's somebody running on the other side, it, it you know, the nerves, everybody's, uh, you know, it's, right. it's a war zone. Everybody's nerves are, the wars are dangerous as all get out. Yeah. People want that danger. So everybody's nerves are shot, you know. Oh my gosh. I can't, I couldn't believe that. Yeah. I've never been, been and these things are like, that thing's heavy. This thing's like 12 pounds. No, the big one, the, the big other one is 12 pounds. This one's like uh, five, I'm six. I'm not sure. I'm, I haven't weighed these. It's still heavy. It's yeah, heavy. Well, yeah, it's, you want a good, Weight and strength. I like everything. Right. Everything I make is exaggerated. Uh, My knives are three eighths of an inch thick. I, yeah, I was looking at some of your Massive. knives. They were. I was like, those are cool knives, but I'm, I'm like, that's a big ass knife. I, I can't make really is carry industrial that. Strength exaggerated. Yeah. Uh, my tridents are 10 times stronger than they need to be. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything I make is... Uh, and that thing's sharp as hell, too. It yeah. might not look at yeah. it like on camera, but I just touched that thing's razor sharp. Razor yeah, it sharp. sharp. The, my hunting spears, yeah, they're thick, heavy-duty metal, too. They're un- indestructible. Wow. Undestructible. Okay. Undestructible. How long does it take you to make one of those? <clears throat> About three days if I'm at it. Three straight days, yeah. yeah. Wow. Especially the bigger one because I got to grind that much more steel. You know, like this has to be, you know, I got to sand the wood down. Right. I got to do the carving, coating. It's not necessary. I got to have a functional trident quicker. Right, right, right. Something you can use right away, but if you right. want to decorate you want to make some cool looking I, stuff I like too. to decorate the stuff. Sure. Yeah. Is this something you've been doing your whole life too? Or is this something new you just got I've into? Always, I've always been an artist, yeah. but I haven't actually made art. done it th- this much. I started getting to weapons in the last, uh, I don't know, 15 years or so. I started cool. making knives probably before that. Yeah. And little by little, I started making. By the time I was doing the outdoor channel, I had a spear in my hand in every show. Right. So I was already uh, headed that way. That's how you, now, you, now you're known as the, the real-life Tarzan. Aquaman, maybe. <laughs> Aquaman. Yeah, yeah. You are the real-life Aquaman. He can yeah, he has not that in the act, new movie, doesn't he? I'm not an actor. Yeah. You're not an actor. You're the real. That's what I'm saying. You're, I, I you're the real there, Aquaman. In the movie, you can do things that you couldn't do in, oh, yeah. in the ocean. You can yeah. elaborate more. So, right. you know, uh, you get to do the, the Aquaman, you get a real actor. Yeah. Now, for lately, you said you've been you've been sh- uh, spearing fish in the Okeechobee, Lake Okeechobee? Or in, tilapia. In the rivers. Tilapia. Okay. Yeah. I love the fact that tilapias are everywhere. It's yeah. just great. I, I like uh, invasive species. Yeah. yeah, because you can hunt them. Right. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Nobody gets upset about it. Yeah, tilapias are great. The alligators are eating them. They're getting healthy on them. Okay, they're good for people to eat. It's one yeah. of the best things that ever happened in Florida. I think. Really? Oh yeah, my opinion. 
I, not people may not agree with me, but that's just that's right. my opinion. <laughs> right, of course. You, you like it, yeah. I like the boar hogs out there. And some people, oh, they're terrible. They're, they're, the end of the world is coming. You know, you see those shows. Uh, the boars are killing mm-hmm. everything. No, yeah. the boars, yeah, we got more Florida panther, which is great. They're mm-hmm. endangered. They're not endangered anymore, thanks to the boars. Mm-hmm. That's their food supply. Uh, and a lot of the and people, hunters, a lot of kids in Central Florida are out hunting boar instead of doing drugs. Yeah. That keeps them busy. Don't take the yeah. boars away from them. Are you going to get an, a drug epidemic or something? Right. Like you can't go anywhere throughout the, all the country. Every guy, they they know they hunt hogs. That's really? what they do. It's the most popular thing. That's what they do. Like in Oklahoma, everybody goes noodling. In Florida, dude, going hog hunting, yeah. I, would tell you, I got the best dogs around. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they, that's what everybody, uh, everybody's like that. Wow. It's Yeah, it keeps everybody busy at night. Yeah. Instead of being in a bar drinking whatever, they're out chasing hogs, which is great. And for my first oh, time okay. hunting hogs, do you recommend I do it with a, with a trident? It depends what kind of hunt you want to do. I mean, if you want to go, you want to hunt with a gun, with a bow and arrow, a crossbow, or you want to go with a spear. You can throw a trident from a tree stand if you don't want to put yourself in severe danger. Okay. Let the guide go find them later. <laughs> Right. Oh, you got to go find it. He'll run off. Let, there, right? Have the guide go. Have the guide go. <laughs> yeah. The guide follow him up. Yeah. He, he knows. He's more experienced. Yeah. You can throw a trident, but most of the people they shoot a crossbow, bow and arrow. Okay. Uh, rifle. If you have dogs, you can use a spear. When the dogs grab, you can spear. That's a, okay. another way you can do it. Okay. That's a single point. If not, you if you want to throw, I tell you, get in a tree. You miss, nothing happens. Okay. The horse runs off. Right. I think I want to try. I want to take my new trident. <laughs> you can. That'll work. Yeah, you can I'm do ready. that. Uh, you can get a get real low tree stand. You don't have to be high. Okay. And put f- food right under you, and don't move till he's t- he's not looking directly under you, and then slam him. Wow. And uh, like I said, just just one hand, just. Yeah. Okay. That's where you do it. Yeah. Wow. I forgot, did we talk about red tide on this, or was was that before we started recording? Red tide. No, we didn't talk about it. At all. So in, in Okeechobee. There's been a lot, so much hype this year about the red tide. It's algae. It happens every year. It's been going on since the 40s. Yeah. Well, the red tide that was recorded in 1840 in the ocean. Right. But when you have a hot summer, you get algae blooms. When it gets cold, the algae dies. Right. So some winters are colder, some are warmer. I mean, the world's been warming since the last ice age. We had first, a thousand years ago, it was very hot on the planet. We had a global warming, mm-hmm. and then we had a mini ice age, 17, 1800s, and that's why everybody was out hunting beaver furs. Mm-hmm. Uh, animal furs are worth more than gold, seven times more than gold was. Nobody's looking for gold. Everybody's looking for fur. Back then. That's why, uh, yeah, New Orleans, yeah, they were buying furs from the Indians. They were trapping furs and shipping furs all the way down the Mississippi and into Europe where the market was for fur. It was very cold. I think I've heard before what happens with a very warm planet, you get more vegetation. Mm-hmm. Yeah you get more crops. Right. Sure. When you get a cold, cold uh, ice age, the world is less productive. You get, I like cold weather myself, but it, there's more food and warmer, yeah. and warmer weather. Right. When you have a cooling planet, the planet starts to get a mini ice age, mm-hmm. then places where crops are growing are not going to be grown anymore. But yet when it warms, let's say if you can grow corn here, then you can go further north and grow corn there because the, the, the widening of the belt. Right. I think the world's always changed temperatures back and forth. Yeah, you know, I could get in huge arguments. Yeah. I guess with people. <laughs> a lot of people, <laughs> yeah. a lot of people. I don't, you know, but it's look. They can scientists. They can say what they want. I, you know, I, yeah. I, the all I know is this is from their, their, not my database, their own database. A thousand years ago, the world was warmer than it is right now. Right, and it got cold, and it's been warming back and forth a little bit since then. Right. So what happens is, uh, yeah, you got more grasslands and more rainforests are spreading. The plants drink the 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 carbon dioxide. Right. And they produce oxygen. So it goes back. There's more like Europe was, they cut down all the trees. Now Europe is completely covered in forests again. Hmm. Uh, things like that happen. Uh, yeah. Wild land, we got more bears in the United States than we've ever had. We got more mountain lions than we've ever had. We got more coyotes than we've ever had. We got more deer than we've ever had. We got less bison because we have cattle to replace and we got fencing everywhere. But overall, uh, we manage our wildlife. We don't, other parts of the world, some of these animals are getting wiped out, not here. Like in other parts of the world, long landing has decimated the shark population. But in the U.S. waters, we got a high shark population. Yeah. Now, the blue shark, which travels across the Pacific, then if you go to California, you see, you used to see a lot of blues and less makos. Now, you see a lot of makos and less blue. Right. I think the, on the other side of the Pacific, they may have decimated the blue shark population because they travel across. Mm-hmm. So that could have been the problem. Mm-hmm. 
But in the U.S., uh, we basically, I mean, in Canada and all that, we got tremendous game population. Very well, yeah. on land especially, very well managed. Largemouth bass, every puddle has them. You know, it's just, it's a popular fish. Whatever is important economically, you see a lot of. Yeah. Deer. Deer everywhere because they're economically important. Whatever, alligators are everywhere, they're economically important. Hmm. Yeah, they're, everything is that is worth something is protected. You were telling me uh, before, I think it was in the Keys, you were saying when there was a big a big red tide bloom that you guys got a ton of cobia or something? Yeah, the, the cobia and the sharks, everything was swarming inshore. Just right. swarms of fish ahead of the red tide. It doesn't come in out of the Gulf and the Atlantic. The, the red tide is usually hit in the Gulf. It might be right. nature's way. The Gulf is so productive. Right. The waters in the Gulf of Mexico are so rich. Right. Well, the red tide is, an, is a biological, uh, you know... Like a thing. cleanser or something? Yeah, no. It may be that the red tide kills a lot of the fish population because there's such a high density of fish in the Gulf. Right. The Gulf is richer than the Atlantic because all these rivers empty into the Gulf. Yeah. The estuaries are the richest place on Earth. It's all the nutrients are washed in there, and that in turn allows for tremendous marine life to, right. de to develop. Right. Uh, and that that's why, uh, like in Louisiana, for example, mm -hmm. mouth of Mississippi, all that area, there's so much fish over there that yeah. they don't know what to do with. Right. Because it's, that area is very rich. Now, if you're in a coral atoll in the middle of the ocean, it doesn't, it cannot sustain a heavy-duty fishing pressure because it's limited because it doesn't have all the runoffs in the rivers to feed the source. So you can fish the Gulf of Mexico commercially until you die, and it's still full of fish. Mm -hmm. You do it yeah. on uh, some little island somewhere, you wipe it out in no time. Right. How do you feel about, uh, I forget where it is. Is it the Maldives or is it, I can't remember where it is, but they're doing like a lot of big shark cull, like culling a lot of sharks. You know what I mean? Where they kill off, where there's so many, like they think there's like overpopulation of sharks, where there are people getting bit a lot, where they're just well, they're culling them, like killing them, like in the masses. I don't, I don't know about it, but I know that's happened before. And when you have too much of something and human lives are being killed, then, you know, you do something about it. Right. You don't have to exterminate anything to the last one, but you can reduce populations. I think right. in Hawaii, they would have a bunch of shark attacks. They would go out and kill 50, 40 sharks. Right, right. And then there would be no shark attacks for the next 10 years. And when the population would come back, it would happen all over again. It was in cycles. Mm -hmm. So they kill some, enough to make it less likely to get attacked, but they, enough to reproduce their numbers back again. Right. And that's how things are. Yeah, Predators yeah. will also wipe out their food supply. Who, what, what? Predators will wipe out their food supply. Okay. And eventually when there's no food, they, uh, they, they die out. Right. The starvation. Then right. when they're not around, their food supply multiplies. Right. And then the few of them that survived, they will multiply because they got a huge food supply. Mm -hmm. I think it was in Russia. They cut down the trees and the grass grew and the stag population exploded, a deer stag. Yeah. So then what happened? Then the, the wolf population went up to 200,000 overnight. Because that was there was that much food out there, so right. they reproduce. So animals reproduce <clears throat> according to how much food. Like you could protect the panthers all you want. If there's no hogs out there for them to eat, right. you're not gonna get any. Right. But when the hog population explodes, they'll explode afterwards. Mm. And if you don't manage them, right. everything will, will be up in cycles. Right. It's all about the, the balance. Well, we do. We keep it in balance. If you let nature take its course, it's an up and down cycle. It takes I don't know so many years for it to bounce back, back right. and forth. The polar bear population is at 25,000. When I was a kid, it was 8,000. So they're killing about a million and a half redneck seals a year. The Arctic cannot sustain that kind of predation by polar bears. So sooner or later, polar bears are going to kill each other. Either going to open season on them or they're going to wipe each other out. There's too many polar bears. Yeah, there's not yeah. enough food to, to supply so, them all. So people right. all look, they're, yeah, they're, they're attacking walruses. They go, it's a global warming. How about there's not enough seals around for them to eat because they've killed right. them all. You know? right. So that's my take on it. Yeah. yeah. Nobody else is saying that. Nobody right. is. Nobody. Uh, Cousteau did a study when I was a kid. It was eight thousand polar bears. Now it's twenty five thousand. It's going to drop uh, probably dramatically in the future if they don't call the population out. Right. I'm not going to hunt polar. I have no self interest in it. Right. And nothing to gain from it. I'm just using my common sense over the years, watching what happens. Yeah. With polar bears, I, I'm not in the polar bear hunting business. Right. I I don't know if I want to go out there uh, mm. that cold. Right. I'm 65 years old now. Yeah. I, I don't know if I want to jump yeah. in that ice out there right now, to yeah. the truth. But that's what's, uh, you know, that's what's uh, going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's what I calculate. And people say whatever, but mm -hmm. you have to manage everything. We have, I mean, we have good biologists here. Mm -hmm. We got, there's good people that study this and know how to uh, keep track of everything. Yeah. 
uh, ideas I have enough out there for recreational use and, and everything else. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that just get upset. Like a lot of people will see something, they'll they'll, they'll read an article about in like a cull on sharks, and people will like throw throw oh. their hands up and be like, "Yeah, they get mad." I, I don't know yeah. what the situation there is right. about the culling sharks. I know what happened in the, in an island in Indonesia. The tiger sharks wiping out everybody. Yeah, I think that's when where it was Indonesia. And it was in the in the, it happened in the '60s. They wiped them out. Reunion, then, Reunion Island. Does that sound right? Think, well, everybody was missing arms and legs as tiger sharks, and next yeah, thing you know, yeah, the yeah. beach was covered in dead tiger sharks. I saw the video. Yeah, Damn. The, the, the villagers, it was the Hindus, I think, went out and caught all these sharks. They, they would take the bodies also and throw them in aim the your, ocean. Aim your mic a little they bit. They would throw. Turn. They were burning all the bodies and throwing them in the ocean, and the sharks were eating the dead ones and the live ones. It was tiger sharks. They'll they'll feed on dead meat. So there was a lot of tiger shark in the area, and people kept throwing bodies into the sea over there. Yeah. So the tiger sharks started they eating. They all just came there. Well, yeah, there was tons of tiger sharks eating people, and they called the shark population. And so it did. Uh, uh, to me, wildlife is great, but human life is, is more important. Right. You know, I'm not going to sacrifice humans for one species out there. I mean, yeah. you know, I think right. people, are, I love wild <clears throat> animals, yeah. I love animals and everything, but people are more important. More important. Yeah. They're, uh, you know, God's image. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, like, do you ever... Is there any times like you feel bad for killing any animals or certain animals, or is there certain animals you wouldn't kill or hunt? Like sometimes you see people that go out and like hunt elephants and giraffes and stuff. I, you know what I mean? Or, I'm not gonna judge anybody on what they hunt. I know the I'm, I'm not gonna kill an elephant. It's too big. What am I gonna do with it? Right. But in Africa, the people eat the elephant meat. The yeah. hunter pays hundred fifty hundred thousand dollars to shoot the elephant. That money really? goes to protect goes to the rangers yeah. to keep the poachers out and to protect the wildlife. So they lose one elephant. And they save uh, a few thousand. Okay. So, yeah. and they, Right. So, that's a different way well, of looking at it because well, most people will just see the picture and cause a big problem over well, it. Well, because I mean? people are emotional. Yeah. I was like, when I was growing up, I said, oh, my God, they're destroying the planet, destroying the forest. I was always right. freaking out about stuff. The more I learned about it, mm -hmm. the more I started saying, you know, well, all the guys at the farm over there is ruining the forest. No, the deer are coming out of the forest to eat the farm, to eat the crops. So, it's helping the deer population. So, I found out instead of the far, far wilderness, all the animals were living near the farm because people produce food for the wildlife. Right. They like to raid our, right. our food stops, our food supply. So it's not always what you think it is. Right. right. Of course not. I, that's what I found out. I mean, it yeah. took me a long time to learn all this stuff, but... Yeah, that's I've, a good insight on I, it. I got, you got to listen to <clears throat> logic, have an open mind and open ears, mm -hmm. and hear everybody. Listen to everybody and look at all the, all the paperwork, look at all the research, look at all the data. Right. And look at everything. That's what you need to do. And uh, and check to see what's going out there. Yeah, I, I got nothing against the elephant hunters. I got something against, like, say, massive slaughter of elephants for ivory because right. there, there's no just control. For ivory. Well, they're, you're they're, poaching, they're, there's no control. They, nobody is saying, well, we're going to kill 15 elephants. No, we're, they're going to kill everything they see. Everything they find, yeah. And that's not, you know, you if you kill one, something's got to reproduce to replace that one. You have right. to replace what you remove. And you got to give that time. So you got to have the time. But if you're getting a lot of money from these big game hunters putting into, right. into the system. Right. they're spending probably a ton of money. That money, uh, uh, listen, no game board is going to work for free out there. Right. You got to pay him well. He's risking his life to protect all the animals in that forest. So, right. right. Yeah, that's what the whole idea. The hunting sustains. Right. Uh, you know, and they're very selective. They're not, they're not going to kill that baby elephant. They're going to kill that old bull over there. And they're going to kill that old lion before it dies. The lion dies. The buzzers will eat it. It's fifty thousand dollars. The buzzers ate. If they right. shoot them a year before another lion kills them, which they will, they kill each other. If they shoot them, then the 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 management area makes fifty thousand dollars. Right. To for their economy, it goes into their. It economy. sustains the economy. It right. sustains their economy. So these places like Zimbabwe and places like that, that's the only economy they have. Yeah. So they run out of wild animals because they don't manage them right. They're out of business. So right. they're going to make sure. So they're not looking to do that, to yeah, wipe them all you, out. But Yeah, if you're in the industry of hunting, you're not going to wipe out <laughs> right. your, what you're hunting. Your, 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 what you're hunting. you got to manage it. you know, got to be you responsible. Ever a, you ever seen a rancher go out there and machine gun down all his cows? <laughs> right. What? A rancher shoot down all his cows in one day? No. Right. I've no. never seen. Oh, no, he harvests a certain amount every year right. of his cows. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's that concept. Yep. Do you, do you ever have people come after you who are like animal rights activists who don't understand it and be like, Manny, Manny just mistreats these sharks or these animals? He's in Not very much. I've had uh, a few people, well... Just people uh, who are like very uh, and against Everybody's got an opinion about something. Oh, yeah. you rode a shark. It might have bothered a shark. When I was catching the Goliath groupers, some people were bothered about that. It was hurting the, the fish. You know, 
there's always I never really I get along with everybody. Yeah. You know, you know I've even one time I had people people contact me when the shark finning was out of control mm-hmm. and the people were killing the sharks. It was after the movie Jaws and the new Smyrna attacks. Everybody was and they were freaking out. I said, well, you know, Ed, you got to have some kind of regulation on this and all that stuff. I, I told people you should work with conservation. It's not just emotional stuff. Yeah, That's right. what I told them a long time. But I, yeah, I've been in contact with people. I never really had much of a, of a problem like that. I, yeah. I tend to get along. And also, I know people are emotional. I explain things. Right. And, you know, I've been to a meeting where a spear fishermen were fighting shark feeders back and forth. And I told guys, really? Don't bring the feds. The fed, yeah, that's how they ban uh, shark diving in the state waters. The guys were trying to ban spear fishing, and the spear fishing said, We're getting attacked by sharks. You guys are feeding them. So it, it turned into a fiasco. And I said, Guys, the ocean's big enough for everybody. Don't get the feds involved, or you're all going to be out of business real soon. That's what I told them. Right. You know, try to get along. You know, guys, yeah, right. get along. The ocean's are big enough for everybody. Get along out there. That, but they did whatever they wanted. Right. I, I said I do both, I spearfish and I and I uh, do shark dives. Right, I, I so you can see both sides. Now I'm just doing artwork. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but back then that's what mainly I was doing that. That's awesome. Like, what kind of people are using these? Are you doing a lot of Where charters with these? Them? Or I these are sold to collectors, they're sold to hunters, they're sold to you know divers, just people that want them. People that yeah. go fish for them. I sell knives. I sell axes. Uh, most of the stuff people like. Just cool stuff to have. But uh, like this right here is used to, for tilapia. Okay. And that, yeah, that is used a lot. Okay. Where can they get these at? They contact you directly yeah, at the website? Uh, or? Instagram. Instagram? Yeah, contact on Instagram. Manny Puig. I'll put, a, I'll put a graphic up of Manny's Instagram. That's all and right. Yeah, check out all the stuff I got in there. I got uh, hook necklaces. I got yeah. jewelry, knives, axes, spears, every kind. and I do custom work too. Awesome. That's depending awesome. on what you want done. And I got two brand new. I got two brand new tridents. I got one for fishing, and I got one that we're gonna use as the backdrop for our new set for for the podcast. Yeah, so we're we're, from on now on, we're gonna have a giant Manny Puig freaking trident, trident in, the in the background of our podcast. Thank you. It's an honor. Hey, thank I appreciate you, Manny. It, Manny. Appreciate you coming out.